Aloha, future superhero. Let's talk about the hero's journey. And that's why we're here after all, isn't it? We're here to become the immortals, the saints, to transcend the apparent brevity of this life and achieve immortality in the truth. Joseph Campbell is uh, well known for studying mythology throughout the world and, and seeing that there is a common pattern he called the monomyth, the, the one uh, pattern that transcends cross-culturally uh, the story of the hero, the hero's journey, the development of the soul. And uh, his, his formulation of it, there, there's many formulations you'll see that are further distilled down to maybe eight, eight steps. But his had 17. So let's go through the full 17 steps as he uh, saw them, again, through, throughout the world, throughout time, uh, how people have recorded in story the, the, the amazing experiences of those who uh, we call heroes. The first step is, he calls the call to action. And I relate this to the first level of our conscious development of the sensorium, of just being present here now. That's our call to action, call to adventure. Is, you know, the adventure is, are we present with it? Are we here? Are we here now? That's, that'll, that'll initiate the adventure right there. We're in the first, first stage of which uh, he calls separation and then initiation and then finally return. Uh, <clears throat> So the call to adventure is followed by the refusal of the call. Well, this recognizes that we have attachment, attachments, you know, at the top of the heart that, that where the energies, the quantum energies are going out and attaching to things we want. Well, when we have desire and want and attachment, the energies flow. We're, we are directing the energy up and out of the heart and therefore opposing the natural flow in and down into the heart to receive to receive joy. Joseph Campbell uh, is you know, famous for uh, admonishing us to follow our bliss. That's how we follow the hero's journey. We follow this intuition, this guidance, because we feel. If we're feeling, if we're heart-centered, we will be on our path. We will find our path. Uh, so then, uh, uh, so that refusal of the call to the adventure, the, the, the journey, the hero's journey, our spiritual development <clears throat> can be related to a sense of duty, obligation. It can be from fear. You know, fear from the, the kidney, from the third chakra can reverse the energy of that chakra and come up and, and affect the heart and make it flow the wrong way. Uh, <clears throat> insecurity. And similar to fear, lack of, of this sense of security or gratitude, and uh, you know, uh, the thought, the thoughts that come from uh, identifying that what we have is is what we need. Uh, it can be a sense of inadequacy, or any attachment to current circumstance. So we don't allow ourselves to flow. We don't allow ourselves to be present in the moment and to feel, so that we can navigate according to those intuitions and feelings. The third step is that there's supernatural aid. And this is grace. Uh, again, the flow of energy through the heart. When, we, when, we, when, we re when supernatural grace comes through, it overcomes our attachments. It overcomes our, you know, our hesitancy, our fear, and, and uh, emotional uh, rejection of, of that grace. Grace is always stronger. Uh, we can participate with it and allow it to flow a lot easier, a lot sooner. But there's always sufficient grace. We just have to open to it to allow it to flow. The more we do, the more we can handle. And that's the hero's journey. That's the, what propels us on our way. It's flowing down, so we're relatively moving upward. We're ascending. This is the ascension. So uh, the supernatural mentor appears when we engage in the quest. 
when we engage our heart, when we allow our heart to attach to not that which we want, that, that which is in the future, that which is in our mind and projected into an idea of, of what should be, what we want, but rather engage with what is, the gift of what's here now, the, the present. When we open the present, when we unwrap the present, I like to say, then we receive that grace. And the mentorship begins, the divine presence. And, and God can be present through whoever, through a mentor. Again, the, the idea uh, the, where that word comes from was that mentor was uh, caretaking Odysseus's son. And, and Athena, the divine presence, divine wisdom, came through mentor. And so we associate mentor uh, with that role of, of divine guidance through another, usually an elder with more experience and wisdom, who has the wisdom to get out of the way and allow divine to be present, not to control with the ego, not to just teach in order to control others, but to, to give, the sacrificial giving. So then we have uh, the fourth step <clears throat> is crossing the threshold, he calls it. And this is... We're crossing the threshold into the, the bottom of the heart. When we say, from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. Grat of gratitude. From, it comes it emanates from the bottom of my heart. We say that. We language it that way. And it's true. Uh, so we're entering into the unknown of the future, the journey, the quest. Because we're receiving the present. We're being present with our body and soul. We move from the body awarenesses of sensorium and feelings and emotions into the mind. Okay, so uh, he calls this the belly of the whale. Interesting that in our model we map the mind into the earth element, which is the belly, the stem stomach, the uh, pancreas of, of, of the earth element and, and the five element system of oriental medicine. So this is uh, where we digest the experience into archetypal, symbolic, virtual representations. We're trying to understand this experience because we're entering the unknown, we're in the belly of the whale. And then we initiate, we enter initiation phase. Uh, the road of trials is the next step. Well, trials are, are active. This is now the, the water element kidneys, the bottom of the, the second sphere out from, you know, we started with the first sphere is the transcendent, the sensorium comes to us, but then it's processed through the heart to make it our own, through the heart where the shen, the spirit live in, in, in oriental medicine. Um, <clears throat> so we have tests and tasks and ordeals, they come in threes according to the way the stories uh, show up in cross-culturally. Uh, and, and failures in these tasks and trials and ordeals lead to our transformation. You know, it's our, our failures that lead to our learning. And we can learn from others' failures as well. Uh, <laughs> that's the wisdom of, of learning, you know, of, of even book knowledge and, and gaining from others' experiences, like coaching and, and seeking a mentor to shortcut the learning process and the time that it takes to gain our own wisdom. Uh, so then, <clears throat> now we, in our model, we transcend into the social sphere, uh, uh, the transcendent sphere the, the, of, of wisdom, the, uh, and then the social sphere, which is in the same sphere of, of navigation of space-time, navigation of the social realm from the, the third chakra below, the fifth chakra, uh, sixth chakra above. And uh, so this is, he calls the meeting with the goddess. Well, the goddess... Uh, you know, in, in New Testament times, it's it's the Divine Mother, the Blessed Mother. Uh, and in Old Testament, the prefiguring of the Divine Mother is Sophia, wisdom. And that's the inner vision that corresponds to the really receiving the, the benefit of outer wisdom and developing our, our vision mm -hmm. is that we understand. When we say, I see, we mean I understand. Then next, in the, in the bottom of that same sphere, again, the social navigation, 
is the woman as temptress. Uh, and this is you know male-oriented hero journey, but we can easily translate it. It applies to all of us. Uh, so in the social sphere, we have the physical and the material temptations of life, uh, not not just uh, you know in human relationship. That's certainly you know the, about the strongest one, but the temptations of materialism, for example, very strong in our culture. So we grow when we realize that there's infinite value, both in the human relationship and in our relationship to the gift of what is. It's not the possession of it. It's actually the giving of it to its highest use is, is where the infinite value lies. Ultimately, spiritually, the only thing we can own is our mistakes. And that's the story of the hero's journey that the mistakes, the challenges, the errors along the way is the source of our learning. All spiritual gifts come from the challenges. It's the flip side. Where there's a gift, there was a challenge. Even when the challenge is overcome, the gift remains. And then uh, <clears throat> we have then the, the transcendent called the atonement with the Father. This is transcendence, our relationship to the divine power followed by apotheosis, the death to self, the, the completion of, of the spheres. But then it's not the completion of the story. We've now built those spheres, but now we are back down to earth and we apply them. We, we give, we give the divine gift, the sacrificial gift of being the mentor and the, the series of challenges that, that that brings in. It's a retracing. It's a reversal of the sequence. And uh, a slightly faster motion. Uh, just like with in healing and physical healing, we have retracing, we have, we have healing crises and healing, uh, healing processes that are usually fast, usually three days. In three days, cancer can be gone. In mo many cases of, of spontaneous remission from cancer, there's 3,000 cases plus in the medical literature. In, in every case, there's a a fever, high fever, bacterial infection, and and that's an ally that helps us to our immune system to to clean out along with the help of these bacteria and their enzymes to break down the toxins that are stored in the tumor and clean it out. There's actually a a, a hundred percent successful treatment for cancer developed several hundred years ago that was the inoculation of of tumors with bacteria, and they gave it up because half of the people died of sepsis, of, of, of toxemia, blood-borne toxins, from too fast to release from the tumor. So it cured the disease. Sometimes like modern medicine, the treatment was a success. Unfortunately, the patient died. But and, and that and the natural history of, of spontaneous remission tells us there's great power in, not in the anti-life or antibiotic approach, but a pro-life and a symbiotic approach to healing the terrain. And phase you'll learn in the phases how phase two is where those those healings happen. So we first have to energize the terrain so that there is are the conditions for those bacterial uh, symbionts and helpers to come in and help us to to clean out the to take out the trash, clean out the garbage, and achieve that transformation. Um, so the the next is the ultimate boon. This is manifestation, the Holy Grail, the elixir of life, immortality, is by completing our immortal vessel of all the, the spheres all the way to the transcendent that we are now a, a fully viable cell in the divine body. When we transcend the physical body, when it dies, when it drops away, we rise up, we ascend by our nature, because we've learned to navigate the spheres as a fractal part of that divine living presence that is, is creation. And the, the return starts with the refusal to return. You know, what do you hear when people have out-of-body experiences, near-death experiences? One of the common cross-cultural features of that experience is this refusal to return. It's like, 
I don't want to go back. And then they're told, they're informed, oh, you have, you're not done yet. You have, you know, still things to do and it's not your time. And it's okay, go back and, you know, you'll, we'll see you again when you get here. Um, so, you know, that's an attachment to the, that transcendent domain, the bliss, the joy, the, 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 the infinite joy of, of, you know, absolute communion with the infinite. It's like, no one would want to come back. And yet, that is the nature of divine service, of being here to help others because we're not alone. We're not just here for ourselves. It's not, you know, about just me. It's about us. It's about we. And we love us. That's why we're here. That's why we're not here alone. We have a planet full of us to practice on. And some are easier to practice on than others. So start there and then we grow to Xenia, to love of the transcendent, of the foreign, of, you know, the, what's the not-self becomes another self. Uh, to fulfill our, our earthly mission, we have to overcome that hesitation to, to be fully present in our divinity and bring that to humanity here now. Like Mother Teresa, you know, reaching out to the, the dying, you know, stinking bodies, cadaverine, emanating from their bodies, they smell of death, and she's there bringing love, seeing them as another cell in God's body, as Jesus, seeing Jesus in them. And we have the, the magic flight, which is re-entering the social sphere with our transcendent wisdom, bringing the divine to earth and to humanity, followed by rescue from without, where as we in our in our mortal coil in our in our smallness you know bringing the great gift to others we are still in the small vessel and we can't do it alone we're not the fullness we're apart and so we receive from others others help us and so that's the rescue from without by you know god present in another this is active aid and assistance from others uh, help from our hello, fellow human guides and rescuers that we now can accept because our mission overcomes our sense of pride or, you know, our, our, our desire to be able to do it all, uh, <clears throat> our ego. Then we have the crossing of the return threshold where we integrate, synthesize, formulate, and share our transcendental thoughts. We, you know, learn through this practice to retain, integrate, and share wisdom. And then we be, through this, we become the master of two worlds. We're still in the transcendent. We know that. We feel it. It's very real. And we're really here now and, and in connection to serving others. Uh, is the integrative power of the heart-centered being, balancing the inner spiritual and outer physical material worlds. And finally, we, we gain the freedom to live. We have the divine passion of sharing, giving life, and we have the freedom, freedom from free, fear of death because we know that we're transcendent beings, uh, bringing freedom to live in the present to others without regret, without expectation, just being here now, being transcendent beyond as well in the triunity.